Hi, my name is Cody Hosterman, and I'm the technical director here at Pure Storage for VMware Solutions. I'm here with... Argenis Fernandez. I'm a principal data management architect here at Pure Storage. And believe it or not, we're here to talk about vVols and, of course, SQL Server. So before we get into SQL Server with vVols, let's talk a little bit about what vVols is and what's, what's the problem that it solves. Right, so today, you have a VM, right? And this has some virtual disks, and this is generally on a data store. And this is great, and this provides a lot of benefits to VMware environments overall, but there's some issue around array-based features, right? If I want to replicate one of these virtual disks, or even this VM, or if I want to snapshot it and restore it, I have to snapshot and restore or replicate this entire volume, this entire data store on, on that single volume. And that, that introduces some problems, complexity around scripting, et cetera, et cetera. VVOLS, among many other things, this is one of the things that it solves. With VVOLS, you have a VM, and every virtual disk is a volume on the array. So this allows you to use granular array-based features on virtual disks, right? Because every virtual disk now is actually a volume on the array. And so, conceptually, this provides a lot of benefits for applications like SQL Server. Yeah, so that granularity of at the virtual disk level enables you to now perform snapshots, clones, and replication setups based on a, a virtual disk alone or a group of virtual disks that you selected. So no longer do you have to think about cloning an entire data store, having to deal with rescanning of, you know, uh, of SCSI bus, resignaturing data stores if you're presenting to the same ESXi cluster. It used to be a big deal out there. And, all, and you can do all of this you know, at a virtual disk level. So no, no longer do you have to look at an entire container, think about all the VM decays that that uh, data store contain, whether you copied more than you needed, whether you need to get rid of the stuff that you don't need it. And that also f solves another problem, which was how do I configure my virtual disk? Do I set it as thin? Do I use eager zero thick? None of those things actually apply on the VVOLS world. You just can create your VVOLS, start using it right away. Right, and one of the nice benefits around this is that VVOLS, was built so VMware could allow the underlying array to really offer its benefits, to really truly value add, not just at a granular level, but also its features. Right? So this is one of the nice things about the flash array and things like snapshots, is that when we copy a volume, when we snapshot a volume, it's a metadata copy. So we can copy a very, very large volume essentially instantaneously. So if you have a 40 terabyte SQL database, we can copy that for dev test scenarios or whatever and present it up to another virtual machine essentially instantaneously. Right, so there's a lot of benefits allowing to actually use our features on the flash array directly and built into VMware. And so one of the benefits around this in vVols is that VMware realizes that you can use these features at a granular level. And so they introduced something called storage policy-based management. Right, storage policy-based management allows you to create policies in vCenter right, based on array features, array features you might want to apply to a virtual machine or individual virtual disk. All right, so if I create a policy here that has all right, one hour snapshot and five minutes replication, and then another policy that's, um, I don't know, two hour snapshot and one hour replication, I can take these policies and apply one to this virtual disk and one to this virtual disk. And then these volumes, the volumes that represent that <clears throat> virtual disk, will get these policies and be configured in that way. And if someone goes to the array and manually reconfigures it, VMware will mark it and say, hey, these are out of compliance and there's something has gone wrong. So this allows you to leverage the array-based features that you might want for SQL Server, replication, snapshotting, via policies inside of vCenter and maintain day zero and day two provisioning. And there's some other benefits around how we built vVols on the flash array around data mobility. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So now, because a virtual volume is a physical volume on the array, or just a regular volume on the array, we don't even call them physical volumes, really. You can migrate from physical to RDM to VVOLS transparently, back and forth. Because the same physical volume layout is the same as an RDM layout, it's the same as a VVOL layout on the array. So you literally can just take a physical volume, move it to an RDM if you choose to, or move it to a vivo if you so choose to. And this actually works always. 
You can go back and forth with no problem. Exactly. You can take snapshots of a, a volume presented to a physical server, present that up to a VVOL, or refresh it as a VVOL. Right? There's a lot of data mobility in the fact that on the flash array, we don't treat a VVOL as a different object. It's, it's a volume. Right? VMware sees it as a VVOL, right? but it's really just a volume with a file system. And so there's a lot of benefits, especially around dev test or moving data between physical and virtual that VVOLs on the flash rate provides for SQL Server. That's actually a great point. So P2V basically becomes second nature here. There is no more lengthy block-by-block -block conversion of a physical volume into an actual virtual LVMFS VMDK. Don't have to do that anymore. You just take that volume and stick it into a VM as a VVOL. Off you go. So thanks, Arjun. So I, I think this is really just the beginning of some of the solutions and features we'll see around virtual volumes and some of the major benefits it introduces in SQL Server environments. So take a look at PureStorage.com for more documentation, more videos, and more information on virtual volumes. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks, Cody.